Aproveitando o break do seu podcast pra perguntar. Será que você sabe... Quem é ele? Esse tá de rock and roll. Trident apresenta um feat de gerações com Rita Lee e Luísa Sonza. Eu procuro estar por dentro, doutor, dessa nova geração. Mas minha filha não me leva a sério, doutor. Ela fica cheia de mistério com esse tal de rock and roll. Quando terminar seu podcast, já aproveita pra ouvir esse feat aqui no Spotify. Trident no Rock in Rio 40 anos. Masca e destrava seu rock and roll. You're listening to Wednesday Wonders on the Mutual Audio Network. Be amazed. The following audio drama is rated restricted for anyone listening under the age of 17. Frequent or prolonged examples of adult situations, violence, or coarse language may apply. My name is Cole Harriman, and I'm addressing Nero Guillaume because she was the last person in charge of my life. And by the way, Nero, don't let that be a blame of some sort or another. I'm not blaming you for anything. It's just I feel like I should be talking to somebody. Anyway, if I don't make it out of here, whoever finds this, you want to turn it over to someone in the Midlands, preferably the Harriman family or someone who can get in contact with them. It's the Harriman family of bugbears. I'm on the third floor now. I'm making my way around. I went back to the door that I came into on the roof, but all the exits have been sealed off. It's like they didn't even exist in the first place. I'm taking off my field footwear. I'm going barefoot now. Stealth mode. There's something in here with me. I've heard it. I'm not sure it's one of those orderlies that Hanover mentioned, or perhaps the angel, but there's definitely something in the building. Its voice comes from different directions at different times. There might be more than one of them, or it has a method of getting around the building that's, well, unconventional. It's looking for someone in here. It's a fairly safe bet it's probably me. I'm going to keep recording anyway, quietly. I'll try to impart any observations I make in case they might help people with this investigation. Unless I get out of here alive. That's my intention anyway. Then I can play this back to people and we can all have a good laugh. Ha ha. My first observation would be the darkness. I've got a low level infrared LED on my lapel. That's shining enough light for me to use my eyes to see in the dark, and I'm used to doing that, but it's not like this. I can see all right, but not past a certain point. It's almost like the darkness has been trapped in this building for so long it's piled up and gotten thick. Sound is a bit odd, too. Like it's been dampened somehow. This isn't the St. Rita's from the off-road. Everything here seems fairly new. There's no layers of dust, there's no debris on the ground. But it's just so empty. And I mean empty void. It's like a space where nothing exists. Even this stuff feels like it shouldn't exist here. It really feels like it's just decoration. Like beyond the walls and beyond the doors, the outside of the building, there's just nothing there. This is all facade. Very carefully crafted facade. Hang on. I can hear something. There's someone down the hall. Almost done. Hello? Almost done. Hello there. I'll, I'll be out of your hair in just a minute. That's, um, Nero. There's a guy here and he's, he's hanging paper on the walls. He's covered the ceiling as well. They're all photocopies. The one with the hand on it. The one that says 144. You shouldn't just say that number out loud. Oh, you should wait until the time is right and it comes through. You see, um, my name is Cole. I have to get these in the right order. I'm almost done. I'll be out of your hair soon. Yeah. I'm almost done. Um, he's dressed in a lab coat. It looks like he's a lab technician of some oh. kind. That's um, it's an awful lot of photocopies you're uh, you're hanging up on the wall there. You have you have to be a clear message. Message. I would have had it done sooner, but it's hard to do this one hand. I okay, yeah, I can see how that that would be a little bit of a problem there. You know, he's cut his hand off. He's missing his hand. There's blood I, all over his sleeve. I had to leave it back in the room. You 
never know when you're gonna need more copies. I'm not done yet, but I will be. I'll be out of your hair soon. Why did you carve that number into your hand? Why didn't you just write it down on a piece of paper and then fill a copy of Because paper isn't permanent! It doesn't have the right reference. When she wakes up, do you think she's going to want to look at a piece of paper? You see the number? I think she's going to want to see that? You think that was the proper level of respect? Who? Who's going to wake up? I'll be done soon. And with any luck, she'll remember that I did this. I don't, I don't know if that'll help. That's all I could do. Are you the one who's been leaving the papers all over the ceilings and hallways all over the hospital? And the, the one near the Midlands? No. I'm not the only one. But I'm the last one. And I'll be done soon. And then I'll be out of your hair. Do you have a name, sir? Something I can at least tell someone else who you are. Not anymore. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> I got all this work, and they send me new things to put out. See? Oh, God. Can I see that? That, that picture you're holding? Can I see it? Sure. If you still lose it, it might be important. Thanks. Nero, two pictures on this piece of paper. One is of Hanover. It looks like he's in a laboratory of some time he's strapped to a chair and something's being stabbed into the back of his head. The other one is of you and Turvey inside the hospital. And there's something coming up behind you. <laughs> All right. Listen to me. I've got to get you out of here. I'll be done in a minute. I said I'll be done in a minute. Listen to me. You can't stay here. That thing is getting closer. You all right? What? Oh, shit. Whatever you and Hanover get paid to do this, Nero, it's not nearly enough. Technical Difficulties presents The Account, A Tale of the Waking World, The Lightning for Hire, Part 11. I have a very highly talented team of heavily armed security agents all around this building. One word from me and they will swarm this place. Is that right? As a matter of fact, it is. And incidentally, I'm also a gun maven and lightning draws my specialty. I can have a bullet in both of you before you even know what happened. So I'd appreciate it if you made no sudden moves. I'm not exactly slow on the draw myself. They're just blades, mind you, but you're not that far away. I'm not sure who would win a contest like that. Let me assure you it would be in your best interest not to find out. Is that right? Oh, for crying out loud, both of you. If you're just going to stand here posturing sexily at one another, why don't you go find yourself a room? I'm enjoying the posturing part. You stand down before everybody gets hurt. And as for you, my name is Turvey. Metadyne ID AA4321HEX. Security code clearance Bravora. Now, I'm going to reach slowly into my shirt pocket, like this, with two fingers, and I'm going to produce my Metadyne identification card. If you can see through her glamour, you're obviously wearing contacts or an eye ointment. You should be able to see the watermark on this card to say it's official. <sighs> Let me see. Oh, son of a bitch. Why didn't you say something sooner? I tried. No one would let me. Turvey, how did you know this guy was with Metadyne? Because if you remember the report, Rayburn had them stationed here to evacuate this place in case of an emergency. Oh. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I, I got a little caught up in the whole... Yeah, I could tell. Well, this looks official enough. Well, if you got any doubts or questions, there's contact information directly to Rayburn on the back. He'll vouch for me. Let me see. 
This card entitles the bearer to be officially recognized as a member of the Equestrian Order of Bronies. Oh, sorry, those got stuck together. Oh, I see. Oh, honestly. Now, hang on a minute. If you're Turby, that means that you're Nero Guillaume? Aren't you supposed to be investigating this whole situation on the off-road? Well, technically, yes, but we just sort of got here. Well, it would have been nice if you told me beforehand I nearly put the whole damn place on lockdown. Yeah, well, don't back off on that idea too quick. You may need to in a minute. Suffice it to say that this is going to take a little bit of an explanation. We've got two team members missing. You might want to contact Rayburn so we can update him on this. Oh, believe me, I would love to. Unfortunately, I can. Our communication network is dead. Since when, exactly? Well, we had it back about ten minutes ago, but it keeps cutting in and out when I say dead, I mean dead. Nothing gets through. We gotta leave the area completely just to get any sort of word out. Is it a jamming device or some kind? No, we would have detected something like that. This is like the signal doesn't even exist. Well, great, now that you mention it. What? What's wrong? I just gave a quick mental check. That dead zone sensation, the one we were experiencing back in the hospital on the off-road? Yeah? It's definitely here. Biscayne. The signal loss. When did it start? It started about six hours ago, though initially it was confined to the first floor of the hospital. It's been spreading outward ever since. Son of a bitch. Hey, do you two want to tell me what's going on here? We're not exactly sure ourselves, but it might be something very, very big. Yeah, and bad. Can you evacuate this place on a moment's notice? Absolutely, if we need to. All we got left here is the day-to-day stuff like tests and day patients. Everybody else, like intensive care unit people, have been moved out. Oh, thank God for that. Yeah, well, if you don't mind, I've got some questions of my own. Tell you what, Biscayne, why don't you score us a couple of security passes for the entire building, and I'll tell you along the way. I'll tell you what. What, Guillaume? You guys meet me at the front desk. I gotta spread the word about a potential evacuation by mouth. I'll be there with a security passes. You better be ready to answer every one of my questions. Don't worry, we'll be there. Well, that's gotta be some kind of progress anyway. A member of the Equestrian Order of Bronies? Don't give me that. Yeah, that is a pretty cheap card. I'm not surprised it got stuck to the back of my ID. Let me see if I understand this dynamic correctly. When you and I want to annoy Hanover, we choose sort of experience versus the greenhorn. Uh-huh. And when Hanover and I want to annoy you, we choose youthful exuberance over the crusty, fusty old cranky guy. I suppose. But when you and Hanover want to annoy me, it's... ponies. Yeah, pretty much. Well, at least it's nice to know what I'm up against, anyway. Why don't we head over to the main desk? The sooner we get those IDs, the sooner we can start looking for coal in Hanover. Okie dokie loki. Oh, shut up. Ah, Dr. Kasperzak, just in time. Status report. Probe inserted into subject Hanover Phillips is online and recording. Vital signs are on screen now. Status of principal subject Helen. Visual confirmation impossible, doctor. All of the security cameras in her quarters have been rendered inoperable, but vital signs indicate that she has left her room and has entered the test environment. Is Dr. Aziz monitoring her condition as I instructed him to? Again, visual confirmation impossible, ma'am. There's no response from the room and the door has been sealed by an unknown force. I see. However, I do have an unconfirmed report of Dr. He's leaving the quarters area several minutes ago. All attempts to contact him so far have failed. Interesting. It seems our young doctor is about to tip his hand. Ma'am, we also have a confirmation of a non-human male having entered the test environment. One of Sir Philip's subhuman companions, no doubt. Let the orderlies deal with it. And what is the status of our principal subject? The Celestial's wave levels have been steadily increasing over the past six hours, ma'am. I believe it's finally waking up. Excellent. And are the retrieval protocols in order? Recovery net is at 100% charge, ma'am. And subject Hanover Phillips bonds are set to release in 20 seconds. Excellent. And I certainly hope Sir Phillips is swift. The storm is about to break. You have been listening to The Account, A Tale of the Waking World, The Lightning for Hire, Part 11. Written and performed by Kyan Chris Conroy as part of the Technical Difficulties Podcast Series. To contact me, it's techdiff at gmail.com. Follow us at twitter.com slash techdiff. Look for Technical Difficulties over on Facebook and Google+, and you can leave a comment on the show over at techdiff.com. To be continued next time on The Account, A Tale of the Waking World, The Lightning for Hire. And the show finally made it up after a week of being missing again. Sometimes I wonder if I should just switch to a bi-weekly format or something like that. Hi, Kyan here, and the show almost didn't make it up this week because of a potential family tragedy, and I'll get to that right now. But first, um, the, the reason I'm backed up a bit is because I'm doing the audiobook, 
And that's taking up a lot of my time, more than I had hoped. Uh, I was hoping to get it done faster than that, but it is getting done. Slow and steady as she goes, and I just got to really ramp up the production on that. And that's cutting into the time that I would normally spend doing the doing these episodes. And as a result, my brain got a little fried. And last week, I was going really well, and then I got blocked. So I just kind of went, ugh, I'm burned out. Let me just stop doing this right here, and I'll, I'll pick it up next week. I had about half the show recorded, and then I got back in and, and finished it off. There was, well, I won't bother to go into the details about what happened and what didn't happen. Suffice it to say, I got the show up this week. But it almost didn't happen again because uh, those of you who don't follow my Twitter feed or my uh, Facebook page, um, my dog, Hoover, our venerated uh, nearly 13-year-old dog, uh, may have lymphoma. If you don't know what lymphoma is, uh, lymphoma is cancer of the lymph nodes which is usually fatal. Um, that doesn't mean the dog is definitely going to die from it right away, but we have to see what stage he's in. So fortunately, I got this done a little earlier than the week than Friday because I have to take the dog in for an evaluation and possibly for chemo and all kinds of other things and medication and stuff, if, if he isn't too far gone, which I hope he's not, because apart from the fact that he's got swollen uh, lymph nodes, he's otherwise normal. Um, so maybe we got it in time. If it is cancer, hopefully not. Keep your fingers crossed. If it is, hopefully we got it in time. And with any luck with treatment, the dog will get another year or two out of, of life out of him. And, um, if it's successful and, um, well, if not, I mean, he's, a, he's nearly a 13 year old dog, you know, a dog living to 14 or 15 is almost a miracle in and of itself. I know that because our dog died a few years ago, and our other dog, our older dog, died at 15, and, well, that's how it goes. So I'm very, very sad about that, but I'm optimistic, and actually, whether I'm optimistic or not, there's not a whole lot I can do. It's out of my hands at this point, so there you go. And um, that's it on that front. That's why the show nearly didn't make it up today, but I did make it up. I did, I did finally get it done and finished and up. And uh, hopefully things will be looking better after that. Could you all do me a favor? If you're a fan of my show, could you, if you haven't already, could you go over to iTunes and leave a review of the show? I've just noticed that a lot of people talk about their iTunes numbers and reviews and such, and no one's reviewed my show in a very long time. So if you haven't already, and you're a new fan to the show, whatever, could you pop on over to iTunes and just leave a review of some kind? You know, even constructive criticism is welcome if you're not going to give, like, a four-star review. Of course, a four-star review or five-star review or whatever would be great. But, you know, whatever, just review it. I, I need it updated so people, maybe maybe people will notice it's still there. And uh, like that. So I'll be back again, hopefully next week, with some brand new material. Very possibly the account. Possibly some comedy that I've been boiling under the surface for because i got to get some comedy up there. i just got to got to lighten my mood and such, and um, like that. And uh, I'll let you know about any other things that happen along the way. So in the meantime, thanks so much for listening and being patient with me. I am Kyan Chris Conroy, and this is Technical Difficulties, and I will be on my way. Thank you. Good night. Hi, I'm Kyan Chris Conroy. And I'm Leonard Vizelsniks, and we're here to tell you about the Technical Difficulties podcast. Yes. That's right, Leonard. Do you remember those thrilling days of yesteryear? The Depression was in full swing, FDR was president, and we were ankle-deep in the last guilt-free war we'll ever fight? That's right. Big Band was the music of the era. You could see a movie with a trolley in it for five cents and hop on Betty Davis for a dime. And of course... You read that wrong. It's what it says in the script. Give me that. Hop on Betty Davis for a dime. See, I told you. My mistake. No problem. <clears throat> And of course, the crowned king of entertainment was the radio. The radio! All the greats were there. Jack Benny, Burns and Allen. The Shadow, the Whistler. Red Rider and the Lone Ranger. And of course, Bob and Ray. Well, those days are gone forever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Pretty much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. So, um, since that part of your schedule is kind of freed up now, uh, we thought maybe you'd like to listen to our show. It's called Technical Difficulties. It's a scripted sketch comedy podcast. Produced weekly, there is over 75 episodes. With an archive of over 30 hours of original comedy content. And featuring a cast of over 300 characters, all voiced by one guy. That would be me, Kai and Chris Conroy. I write, produce, direct, and perform the entire ding-dang thing all by myself. Well, you do have occasional guests. Yeah, well, same, yeah but I mean, not very often. Okie dokie. Well, if you'd like to hear Technical Difficulties, here's how. Well, yes, Leonard. To do the announcer voice. Huh? Oh, oh, right, right. If you'd like to listen to the Technical Difficulties podcast, then head on over to techdiff.com, T-E-K-D-I-F-F.com to pick up the RSS feed, or go over to iTunes, where you can subscribe there under comedy. That's right. It's spelled technical, T-E-K-N-I-K-A-L. We spelled it funny, because who wants an audience to be able to find you easily? Yes, we were being clever. Yeah. Certainly outsmarted ourselves. Mm-hmm. 
So remember, that's technical difficulties at techdiff, T-E-K-D-I-F-F, dot com. For all your comedy needs, go on over there and give it a listen. Come on, Hitler's dead. You've got the time. That's techdiff.com, T-E-K-D-I-F-F. Hope to see you there. Hokey dokey. Bye. I'd jump on Betty Davis for a dime. You and me both bust up. That'd be like, what, 20 cents or something? That's Technical Difficulties. T-E-K-N-I-K-A-L-D-I-F-F-I-K-U-L-T-I-E-S. Techdiff.com.